The composition of functions is another topic that you've probably seen in your earlier algebra courses. Here's the definition. If f is a function from a set a to a set b, and g is a function from a set b to a set c, then the composite function, which we write as g with a little circle f here, we see that says g composed with f, is a function from a set a to a set c defined by uh, g composed with f is g of f of x for all x in the set a. So to understand this, it's best to look at an example. Suppose I have the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I'll call that set A. And then I have the set of numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8, I'll call that the set B. And then I have the numbers 9, 10, 11, and 12, and I'll call that the set C. And then I'll define a function f that maps 1 to 5, 2 to 7, 3 to 6, and 4 to 8. And then I'll define a function g that maps 5 to 10, 6 to 9, 7 to 11, and 8 to 12. And now let's ask, what is g composed with f of, and we'll pick a specific number here, how about of 1? So g composed with f, we write like this, g circle f of 1. Okay, now what does this do? Well, g composed with f brings something in A to something in C. So you can think of it as taking something in the set A and bringing it directly to something in the set C. That's what G composed with F would do. So G composed with F of 1, we can rewrite this as G of F of 1 using the definitions. So this is G of F of 1. And now this would be the same thing as g of, well, what is f of 1? f of 1 is 5. So this is the same thing as g of 5. And what's g of 5? Well, here's the function g right here, and 5 is mapped to 10. So g of 5 is 10. And that tells us that g composed with f of 1 is 10. Now notice that this 1 here is in the set A, and that f of 1 is in the set B, and f of 1 is 5, so that's still on the set B. And 10 is in the set C. So what this did was it took 1 and mapped it to 10. This was something in the set A mapped directly to something in the set C. Let's look at another example. Suppose I have a function f, which uh, goes from the real numbers to the real numbers, given by f of x equals 5x plus 1. And then I have a function g, which also goes from real numbers to real numbers, given by g of x equals x squared minus 2. All right, let's calculate a few things here. Let's first start by trying to find g composed with f of 3. What would that look like? Okay, so... This is going to be g of f of 3, just using this definition up here. And this is going to be g of, okay, f of 3. Well, f of x is 5x plus 1, so f of 3 will be 5 times 3 plus 1. This is 5 times 3 plus 1, okay? That's easy to calculate. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. And what's g of 16? Well, it's going to be 16 squared minus 2. And 16 squared, that's 256 minus 2. And so we get 254. Okay, well, what if I wanted to get a general formula for g composed with f? In other words, what if I didn't put in a specific number? I just left it as x. Well, I can do that in this case. I can say then that g of f of x is what I'm actually trying to compute. And that's g of, I can just plug in the formula for f of x. That would be 5x plus 1. And now g of 5x plus 1. Okay. So g of x is x squared minus 2. So g of 5x plus 1 is going to be the quantity 5x plus 1 squared minus 2. Just taking whatever's in here and replacing it with the x that's in the formula. And now I can multiply this out. 
So this is going to be 25x squared. And then I'm going to get 5x and 5x. That's going to be plus 10x. And then plus 1, minus 2. And I can do one more simplification. I get 25x squared plus 10x. And then I have a 1 minus 2. That's going to be minus 1. Let's use this formula to see if we uh, do indeed get 254 when we do g composed with f of 3. So it should work. Let's just double check. So this would be 25 3 squared plus 10 times 3 minus 1. Okay, 3 squared is 9, so this is going to be 25 times 9 plus 30 minus 1. And if you do this on a calculator, or if you uh, do the arithmetic, you do indeed get 254. So the formula works. No big surprise there.